So Team Affinity is coming back out tomorrow with Season 2, Chapter 3. Now, we're going to be talking about how you guys can prepare for any Team Affinity. It doesn't matter if it's Season 2, Chapter 3 or Season 3, Chapter 1. Any Team Affinity, most likely an MLB The Show. It could be MLB The Show 25, and it might be similar to what we're going to do here. But how can we prepare for Team Affinity so we can get through Team Affinity as fast as possible? and basically get the grind that we want to get the grind over with so we get 30 new cards that you guys can use for the season two collection as well as new cards that you can possibly put in your guys's lineup and add to your squad now because i did exchanges in chapter two i think we're going to go look at chapter one so i can show you guys some exchanges but we're going to focus mainly on exchanges obviously when there's moments do the moments as well but exchanges is what's going to give you a big head start. Normally, you'll get close to or around the first boss just from exchanges. So what you want to do is you want to go to the marketplace and find 73s and 74s near quick sell value. Any bronze cards quick sells for 25 stubs and 73s and 74s are going to be the better value because once you go up to 75s, that's now a silver. So you're just going to be spending more stubs at that point less cards you have to buy but obviously you'll be spending more stubs once you hit silver gold or diamond cards for exchanges unless there's any duplicates so like you know how we get choice packs and we get a bunch of choice packs that are no sell if it's a if it's a no sell and it's a duplicate you can get rid of those cards first that could definitely help you out however if you could sell that card i much rather sell it than put it into the exchanges and I would only put cards into exchanges that are duplicates, especially if you're going, if you're doing diamonds or golds or stuff like that. But if you guys want to buy cards and spend the least amount of stuff possible and still get Team Infinity done fairly quickly, this is where you want to be. Like you guys see, I have 74 Gavin Williams here. I definitely need more. I try to go for around 300 to 400 of these 74s or 73s, and that should help me get exchanges done. Now, I also have some other uh, 74s and 73s in here randomly from pulling packs and stuff like that. So that's fine, too. You can use some of those kind of like gates where you need to be and what you need to do. And obviously, the lower overalls, I'm going to have some of those as well. But if we go through like some of these each division, so we just did AL Central. So if we did like a AL East, now when we go to the AL East, a lot of these I know I prepared already. So 74s don't have any on that page. We go down to the next page. We got 300 Alec Manoas and another 329 Albert Suarez. Now, I'm going to use Alec Manoa first. If I need any more exchanges, I will go to the 73. But you're going to get significantly more points. Exchange value is 1,500 versus 1,200. So you're getting 300 more. Now, 75s, you, you definitely get some more. You get 1,900, but the prices of those are going to be significantly more most of the time. So your better value, if you go to showzone.gg, can actually tell you what the better value is. And 99% of the time is going to tell you 74s are the better value, especially if you give them at 25 stubs. Even some of these I got at 30 stubs were still a better value than going with any other card. It will give you the cheapest value based on how much exchange points you need. So when you go to showzone.gg, you can put in, 300,000 exchange points, or I can do 600,000. Say I say I want to do all three of these. I can do 650,000. It'll tell me the cheapest car to buy to get that 650,000 as, as cheap as possible when it comes to stub value. And that's what you're going to do. Now, when it comes after that, I would focus on moments, do your moments, or you can do moments first and do exchanges after. But the the process of doing exchanges is you want to do this before Team Affinity. So if you're watching this video on Friday and Team Affinity is already out, chances are these values in these exchange values are much higher because people are buying those cards to do the exchanges. However, if you prepare these exchanges, buy these cards days, weeks before the Team Affinity drops, you can get them a lot easier at the quick sell value of 25 stubs or 25 to 30 stubs is pretty good value for these cards, especially the 74s. However, if you wait until Team Affinity is out, these prices are going to rise and it's be a lot harder to get the best value.
So my suggestion, that's why I say it works for any team affinity, because you could be watching this video after season two, chapter three. You could be watching during season three, and I'm letting you know that you can still do this method. You'll just have to buy the cards before the next team affinity comes out and try to look for them as close to 25 stubs as possible. I wouldn't really pay any more than 31 to 32 stubs on a 74. 73s, I want at least under 30 stubs if I'm going to do 73s just for the best value. Roughly around 10,000 stubs or less. If you give it 25 stubs, just definitely around 8,900 or 8,500 stubs to complete uh, the exchanges. But if you spend a little bit more, around 10,000 stubs for each division. So 60,000 stubs in total. And if you look at the actual thing, you're getting packs back. So you're getting that value back in packs anyways. So I wouldn't really worry about the 60,000 stubs. When you grind Team Affinity, you're going to be grinding the XP reward path. That's going to give you some stuff. And also it's going to have some packs inside of here that you can sell. And it has stub rewards. So you're getting some of those stubs back already with those stub rewards in 2000 to, and, uh, 1500 right here. That's already 3,000 stubs right there that you're getting back plus all the pack value and whatever else they might throw into this. After that, probably the Extreme Showdown. You want to try to do that because the Extreme Showdown is going to count for every division. If you can, for some reason, cannot complete it, you're not good enough, you don't have to do it. I'm just saying if you can do it in roughly one or two tries, it's definitely worth it. It's going to give you 20,000 TA points for each division. So that's a value of 120,000 TA points right there in the extreme showdown now conquest is a little more more tedious conquest is as much longer as 10 games but it's also going to count for i believe three of the team affinities oh this one's this ta east so all the east divisions it will count for it also two of the east divisions so there's three conquests in total on this one hopefully they give us an al uh conquest and an nl conquest and that way we only have to do the uh, two conquest maps and not three. That would be a little bit better, but still a lot of games to play. So if you don't have to go that route, I don't necessarily think uh, doing conquest is the fastest route, but it could be an easy route because you're just playing against a CPU and conquest is pretty easy, especially if you follow my conquest tutorials that are on YouTube. After that, there is some multiplayer missions or single player missions. It really just depends on how good you are and where you want to grind, whether it be CPU uh, games, Conquest games, mini seasons. I don't know what chapter three is going to look like for season two. It, they're probably not going to separate like this because people didn't like when they separate. Oh, you got to play mini seasons and then you got to play Conquest and then you have to play CPU. Hopefully it's all in one so you can grind it anywhere you go. And then that way you can get it done a little bit faster. But also multiplayer missions. Multiplayer missions are really good because they give you a lot of progress. You can even do a lot of these in co-op. And I think multiplayer missions just go a little bit faster than offline missions sometimes, at least for me. If better you are, the easier it's going to be. But whether you choose multiplayer or single player missions, both of them are going to get the job done. And the better you do, the faster you're going to get it done. And then PXP missions are pretty easy as well. Now with PXP missions, online definitely works a little bit better because you get more PXP playing online than you do offline. So those are my tips for Team Affinity Season 2, Chapter 3, or any other Team Affinity that you might be working on right now or want to be working on in the near future. So hopefully these tips help you out. I will see you guys in the next video. Be sure to like, subscribe if you're new, turn notifications on. And I'll see you guys next time.